Hey, it's the Donahue Show, and we are, well, where else should we be in February? We're in New Hampshire. This is where it's at, certainly after Iowa, a real primary with real voting booths and real Americans going to the polls. And who's going to win this one? And is the media too concerned about the horse race? Well, we'll talk about it. This town of 12,000 in beautiful New Hampshire is not far from Manchester, and I would remind you that this is a state claiming over one million souls. Not much more, but they are over a million, and 98% of the folks in New Hampshire are white. That doesn't mean they should plead guilty about anything, but it does make you wonder why we're so focused on New Hampshire for our first primary, that is to say, real primary state. We've got some folks in here and a real live guest as well we want you to meet. Welcome to the Bedford, New Hampshire, Town Hall. And we're going to find out if uh, these folks in here are as pumped up about this primary as media seems to be. Hang on just a moment. Here they are now. Thank you. Yeah. How are you doing? Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Well, look at here. Thank you. Well, now, you're so much thinner in person. Uh, well, we haven't seen you in four years. God knows how you get along without us during those four years. What do you do up here for four years? I mean, there are a whole bunch of folks in my game who think that uh, New Hampshire somehow reappears on the horizon every four years. And what a race we've got here. I mean, come on. Who's going to predict this one? And is there a corner in this state that doesn't have a sign planted in the ground? <laughs> we are pleased to welcome as our guest on this, uh, our second program from New Hampshire for this uh, very political week, um, a man who has uh, become a household word. You cannot count the number of people whose lives have been saved and who have been spared maiming catastrophic injuries because of quite literally a quarter century fight with the auto companies for airbags. Can you imagine? Nah, they didn't want to put them in. Nah, they cost too much. Nah, they're going to go off. We cannot calculate the families that have been spared the agony of head on collisions, injuries that follow when the egg in the crate, us people inside the car, rattle around because of his stalwart defense and promotion of the airbag. Now the auto companies use it to promote and sell their own cars. And incidentally, is he going to run for president this year? Ladies and gentlemen, here's Ralph Nader. There you go. Hey, we're ahead already, kid. Well, they sure look uh, very much uh, energetic, and uh, they take care of themselves here in New Hampshire. Um, we can feel the energy. Well, uh, Ralph, uh, you have, uh, you must be uh, more than a little concerned about what's happening in this race. Where shall we start? Let's start, let's talk about Steve Forbes just for a second here. Boy, he's making news, running ahead in the uh, race. Some polls have him leading here, Steve Forbes. <laughs> the magazine man, Ralph, what's wrong with a guy spending his own money and saying he wants to be president? At least he's not going to take bribes. He's already rich. <laughs> Mr. Nader. Well, he spent all his life representing big, powerful corporations. When they conflict with the interests of workers, small business, small taxpayers, consumers, that's the first thing you want to know. I mean, someone once said about Steve Forbes, he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth and a silver lining to his diaper, and that he inherited over $400 million. There's nothing wrong with that if you use it to fight for an average person in this country. But he's a Wall Street insider. He runs a big magazine, Forbes magazine, full of sniping mistakes and uh, selling the editorial pages to advertisers. Uh, we call it Fibs magazine. The key is, 
Where does he get the where does he get the cachet to say to people in New Hampshire, I have stood for people who are, have confronted injustice time and time again? He hasn't. He stood for big fat businesses, the big mega corporations, and this flat tax is a great tax cut for the rich and powerful and for the Forbes family. Do you know this flat tax only taxes working people? That if you sit around getting huge amounts of money from capital gains and, and, and interest and dividends, no tax whatsoever. It's at 17% guaranteed to create a $300 billion deficit, and it doesn't have a flat effect on everyone. Not if you have a home mortgage interest payment every month. Not if you get employer-based health insurance. And yet, $20 million he spent in about two months flooding the airwaves in New Hampshire, Arizona, Iowa. And he's ahead of the race. You know why? Because people are so disgusted with professional politicians, they'll almost take anybody who says he's an outsider and who says that he represents change. Listen, we can't get away from our own commitment as citizens. How many people here uh, have spent 25 hours before the February primary in New Hampshire, studying the records of the, of the candidates, mobilizing yourselves. You know, that's what it's all about, Phil. Society rots from the head down, and it reconstructs from the bottom up. That's the history of the United States, from the abolition of slavery, to women's right to vote, to right workers to organize, to environmental civil rights movements. That's where it's at. We can't get away with just picking presidential candidates like we pick ice cream flavors based on 30 second ads. It's too deadly serious a business for us not to spend more time on it. We are also, uh, it's a rather unbecoming comment about ourselves, isn't it? That a man can come in here and wallpaper uh, television channels with commercials and find himself in the lead it sounds like we can be just pulled and pushed in any direction at all it makes us wonder about our own independent uh, enthusiasm for citizenry i would ask well, for your comment beca because first of all we don't give ourselves time to think when you're dealing with politicians politics government the future of the united states of america and all its manifestations you just have to spend more time on it I mean, if we want to be smart consumers, it's a good idea to spend more time learning how to shop, what not to buy, what to buy, food, insurance, cars. The same is true for if we want to scale as a job. We spend time learning how to be a mechanic, how to be a doctor, how to be an architect. When it comes to voter voting, it's like forever amateur. I mean, just look at the plight of the country today. Right now you have super corporate profits up, corporate executives making tons of money, stock market setting all records. At the same time that homelessness is on the increase, 80% of the workers have suffered declining uh, standards of living in terms of wages uh, for the last 20 years. One out of four children lives in poverty. Corporations shipping jobs to Mexico and the Far East for surf labor, and then shipping them back here. And to top it off, to top it off, we don't have much of a prospect for improving things for the bottom 80% of the people in this country. You know. If someone said to you, what country in the world is it that 1% of the wealth at the top is equal to 95% at the bottom? You might say, you know, Guatemala, Brazil. The wealth of the top 1% in this country is equal to the wealth of the bottom 95% of Americans in this country. History shows when you get a big disparity of the rich and the rest of the America. We're in trouble. Every time in our history we recovered democracy, the farmer reforms around the turn of the century and workers and consumers and women, we have improved our country. Why? Because democracy works. Democracy is the best way to solve our problems. And these corporations have got us on their knees. They're basically saying, we're going to downsize the middle class. We're going to lay off thousands of workers. We're going to uh, escape from this country to make more profit. And this is what's going on. Here you have banks, they, they give you 3% interest on your saving. They charge you 17.5% on your credit card. <laughs> they charge you 8.5% 8, 8 on your mortgage. They're making tons of money. And guess what? Whenever these big corporations get in trouble, what happens? They go to Washington for a bailout. So the taxpayers are bailing out 
these companies like the savings and loan, you're paying half a trillion dollars interest and principal in the next 25 years to bail out a bunch of crooks and speculators. The workers, how about this? Martin Marietta and Lockheed merged recently. Did you know the Pentagon allocated $31 million of your tax money to pay for the bonuses of a handful of executives at the top, one of whom made $8 million in one year? And you talk about welfare mothers with two kids who are trying to get a job and can't find one, and if they do, it's four and a quarter an hour minimum wage? And these fat cats, we call it Wall Street Socialism. In other words, they capitalize the profits, but if they lose, you pay. You pay through bailouts, giveaways, all kinds of corporate well, We're going subsidies. to save money, Ralph. We're going to get those illegitimate babies off welfare. We're not going to give any money to teenage mothers. We're going to give it back to the states. We're going to make government lean and mean, more efficient, and our taxes are going and, to go down as a result of and, it. And we're going to make kids walk with their feet, huh? Huh? What, what about these kids? Listen, the entire federal government welfare programs, except for Medicaid, I don't consider Medicaid welfare because in all Western countries, you have universal health insurance. Health insurance is not considered welfare in England, Japan, France, etc. Apart from Medicaid, it's 35 to 4% of the entire federal budget. That's the poverty programs, feeding programs, uh, you know, food stamps, aid to families with defended children. The corporate welfare budget, the giveaways of federal land minerals, uh, the, the guarantees, the, the bailouts, the inflated government contracts, the tax loophole are far bigger. You're paying far more for corporate welfare. And what do they do? They swing, oh, it's that foreign aid. You know, there's a poll recently said foreign aid, people thought foreign aid was 15% of the federal budget. It's 1%. When they ask people, do you want foreign aid, they say no. They say, how much do you think you should have? 5%. It's 1% you got to get the information. We're going to show, uh, you know, this, this multinational magazine that one of our affiliate groups pulls out that concentrates on what the tobacco, chemical, drug industry, oil industry are doing to our jobs and to our consumers and to our environments. The we great thing about all this is Citizen Action Phil is fun. Democracy is the best way to human happiness. And as Andrew Jackson, one of our early presidents, once said, he said, if a country, our country's in trouble, the answer is not less democracy, it's more democracy. The more we lose control, the more concentration of power and wealth in fewer and fewer hands, the more trouble we're in. And uh, isn't it curious that uh, arguments or statements against corporate greed just kind of lay there? You don't hear this in a campaign. You hear welfare and abuse. You hear uh, put sl uh, throw the bums in the slammer. You hear that. But you, you hear lower taxes, you do not hear about corporate greed. Why should that be? I asked Ralph one time why there are so many conservatives on the air and so few liberals. And in his own way, he said, uh, because conservatives criticize government and liberals criticize corporations. And corporations advertise and government doesn't. Uh, and is Archer Daniels Midland inoculated from review because they sponsor the Sunday morning news talk shows? Of course. Have you ever seen David Brinkley or the uh, Tim Russert or the others uh, talk about corporate crime, fraud and abuse? I mean, when it comes to corporate crime, corporate violence, toxic chemicals, workplace death, pushing tobacco on little kids to hook them for life, street crime is about 28,000 homicides in this country. Medical malpractice alone in hospitals, according to the Harvard School of Public Health Physician Study, take 80,000 lives a year, just in hospitals. That's more than the combined death toll of motor vehicle crashes, uh, homicides, and death by fire. And there fire. are very few autopsies, incidentally. Right. They just cover them up and wheel them out the back door. There is no autopsy. Why did this patient die? And furthermore, just look at, if someone says to you, what do you think of when the three words are crime, violence, and welfare? We all think of the street. We all think of street crimes, poor welfare people standing in line for their checks. The biggest crime, welfare, and violence comes from corporate misbehavior. You have 420,000 people dying from tobacco. They were all hooked, almost without exception, under the age of 17, 13, 12. That's where they hook them. You got 100,000 people dying in workplace accidents, toxics, lead, beryllium, etc., traumas. You got 50,000 people dying from air pollution alone. 
45,000 on highways. We've helped to reduce that. That's one of the few problems that's gotten better. Why? Because consumers banded yeah. together and spoke out. But and it's going to get worse. Standards. It's going to get worse because the speed limit has been. Now we can go above 55. Yeah, the Republicans and you, you figure how many deaths as a result of that? Department of Transportation says 6,500 more deaths, 20,000 total permanent disabled a year. Because of we're uh, raising the or giving states the option to raise the speed limit. This audience wants to question Ralph Nader. Incidentally, is he going to run for president this year? You might want to ask him. We'll, at, we'll give you a chance to get in on this. This is your country, your state. Everybody's talking about you. You're on the front page of the newspapers all over America. Hey, what's not to love about New Hampshire? I'm going to kiss a baby myself while I'm here. And we'll be back in just a moment. Yes, ma'am, you wanted to ask. Go ahead. Yes, Ralph, we want you to run for president. Are you running? <laughs> Are you running in New Hampshire? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm running uh, on the green ballot in California uh, and perhaps in Maine. And the idea is not to just to do jackpot politics. We, we've got to break up the two-party duopoly in this country. So many people are alienated from it. Look at Pro gets 19 million votes because he's none of the above in 1992. So we're going to try to generate more competition. No focus on the candidate as much as on broadening the agenda. How do we rebuild our democracy? That's the biggest issue. Giving voice and power to w voter citizens, taxpayers, workers, uh, consumers, and shareholders. Those are the five roles we've got to play. Otherwise, we just, you just pack it in. These giant global corporations will twist our country and pit poorer countries abroad against us under these giant trade agreements. And there won't be much left of, of our nation. Over here, please. Yeah, I'm not sure if the New Hampshire primary is even that relevant anymore. I think Forbes has proven the point through using the airwaves that why come to New Hampshire? The whole point of it is to mix it up with people, to go out and shake hands. And, and all you see them is on television. Well, Forbes canceled an appearance at our college, New England College, two days before he was scheduled to arrive. And it was when he was climbing up in the polls. So he probably asked himself, what's in it for me? And said, it's not worth it. I may slip up. I mean, imagine a citizen who's unpredictable asking a question. He can't manufacture uh -huh. the image. You know, New Hampshire's always had a... Had a <laughs> New Hampshire's always had a tradition of holding the candidates' feet to the fire. You know, retail campaigning, they got to shake hands, they got to talk, they meet in living rooms, the candidates. If, uh, if the fool's gold of Steve Forbes prevails here in New Hampshire, based on all this cellulite money on Boston, mostly TV stations, um, it's going to just give the signal to the rest of the country. It's all over. It's all who can get the 30-second ad, who can get the slogan. I think we're better in that as a people. I want to see New Hampshire be known as a tough state, so these politicians, when they're talking to one another, are saying, hey, these citizens are reorganized. They require us to meet in auditoriums, high school auditoriums. They're informed. They want to know what our record is, not our rhetoric. What have you done in the past? And New Hampshire is a tough state. So in the next you know, few days, don't, be, don't allow yourselves to be overwhelmed by this kind of celluloid campaigning. You're going to send that signal to the rest of the country. The most oft-repeated uh, political story in New Hampshire is the one about the woman who was asked by the press, are you going to, last four years ago, are you going to vote for George Bush? And the New Hampshire citizen said, I don't know, I've only met him three times. <laughs> now, the fact is that that is apparently a day that is ending, as indicated by this young woman's question. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, why, why go to the coffee clutches when you can go on TV and you get yourself a lead in the poll as long as you have an unlimited supply of money. See, the citizens long before the primary should all get together, like they used to in the old town meetings, develop a, a democracy agenda and present it to the candidates and say, this is what we want you to discuss. We are summoning you, the candidates, to our town halls. 
And, and uh, instead, what the candidates do is they parade in front, on TV, in front of the people, and uh, it's Tweedledum, Tweedledee, one slogan. You like the, it's like choosing ice cream flavors. And you know, one thing about pushing for stronger democracy, it brings out the best in us. Democracy s searches for the solutions that we have in this country to energy and housing and the economy, et cetera. We have these solutions. The idea that people change jobs and can't get health insurance on their pre-existing asthma or high blood pressure. Is there something in Europe that they know that we don't know? They, they got universal coverage. So does Canada. You know, we got to shape the campaign. We are spending $2.3 billion for each B-2 bomber, Yeah. but we're angry at a welfare mother. Um, we, it, it, it does look like we're uh, worried about the wrong things. I don't understand why it isn't. We, I see very little indignation about corporate excess. We think of a union member as a person who drinks coffee all day and never give a glance to the white collar people who are laying people off so their stock will go up and they get more dividends. Why should this be? Labor is somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 16 percent of the population. It couldn't be lower than it is now. We're not making connections, uh, Phil. Look, the, uh, there are taxpayers who are fed up with that bailout to the Mexican dictatorial regime and their billionaire oligarchs. Uh, there are uh, small businesses that are fed up with these franchise agreements that bring them a kind of modern form of feudalism, as Gordon Sherman, who set up the Midas Muffler franchise system, admitted. There are workers who, who see these fat cats at the top of their company making off like bandits while they're just thrown on the unemployment heap. Uh, we're not making connections, though. For example, if we want a good budget for drinking water safety in this country, for dealing with infectious diseases, for dealing with children's nutrition, for dealing with legal services for the poor, you know, equal justice under law, for dealing with a better repair of our highways and bridges. Why don't we say this? Hey, the Republicans gave $8 billion more to the Pentagon a few weeks ago than the Pentagon wanted. And the Pentagon budget is, is, is now in the post-Soviet empire days, yes. is almost as big as it was when it was designed to deal with the Soviet threat. But it's a works program, Ralph. Let's understand what this but is. But it doesn't create anywhere near the number of jobs that building, uh, ho building houses, building kill clinics, repairing our schools that are falling apart. When you build missiles, you don't create a fraction of the jobs per billion dollars that you, you create when you build public works. And people say, we've got to balance the budget. There are two simple ways to balance the budget. You cut the Pentagon budget by bringing our boys back from Europe and in Asia those countries are perfectly able to defend themselves against Moldova or Ukraine. You're and first when we come back. We're in New Hampshire with Ralph Nader, and we'll be back in a moment. Yes, ma'am. Um, I agree that most people are looking for somebody who is not really a politician to put in the White House. Right. But um, I think that people would like to see somebody who remembers what it was like to live paycheck to paycheck and somebody who's got some common sense. So you could use a non millionaire as a candidate. Exactly, exactly. Not somebody with a silver spoon. <laughs> If you were to endorse someone in the uh, Republican primary, who would that be? I, wouldn't endo I don't endorse politicians. I just want to say one thing. The only person, and I disagree with him on a lot of other issues, the only person who's raising the issue of global corporate power over our jobs and standard of living is Pat Buchanan. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you get a fence along the Mexican border, I think. Well, as I say, I don't agree with him. <laughs> um, Yes, sir, you wanted to, you wanted to say. Yeah, I think we're uh, perhaps 
holding election too soon yet. The Forbes hasn't won the election here in New Hampshire. That's a good point. And uh, New Hampshire voters have been very astute in past elections and usually come up with a good candidate. So I think we had better wait until we see the results of the election before we assume that Forbes is going to be the candidate. Your very thoughtful comment is on the record. You're quite right, sir. <laughs> Sir. Uh, Ralph, I agree with just about everything you say. In fact, uh, I voted for you in 92. Uh, <laughs> what happened? Uh, well, what you say, it looked like uh, Bill Clinton would be the most uh, best person to do the things that you say would be done. If it wasn't for him, uh, we would have had, been out of this uh, deficit thing and he's holding it up because of uh, aid to education and the welfare program um, and environment. Um, I think uh, there's something to be said for him. The I president think, does think, not get a standing ovation from Ralph because... I think, I, I think he would have been better off if he had a, uh, some primary challengers to... to um, to dis debate with him. He's, he's got an easy road now, and that's not good for any politician. Stan, please. Yes. Would you comment on the candidates and public education in the United States? Yeah, well, I believe in public education. I think it's worked in the past. It has come some serious problems, in, especially in some of our large cities. The approach is to improve it, to have the parents more involved, uh, to, to get more repair of the schools, to get a different quality of civic education, to get these kids out, analyzing and working with responsible adults, trying to improve their community. It's a good way to get them to read, write, and figure. I don't believe in privatization. Once you corporatize our schools, then the bottom line becomes the tyranny. And all kinds of things start happening. Corporate propaganda floods the schools, certain textbooks are used, certain videotapes are not used, uh, and before we know it, the overall binding together of people uh, and children will be gone. They'll cream off the top, the, the, the students who have uh, uh, problems learning, problems with disabilities will be, will be thrown together with underutilized resources. Not for Over here, please. Ralph, do you believe that abortion should be a political issue? Uh, I don't talk about those issues. I talk about democracy issues and giving people the tools. <laughs> Giving, yeah. and, uh, uh, giving people the tools to build their own communities. I think we're, we're uh, throwing out into the public arena too much private stuff. I mean, it's, a, it's just... It's, uh, yeah. Why does mudslinging produce positive results for the candidates? It does, though, doesn't it? Sure does. Yeah, negative advertising works. Well, if it's robust debate, one person says, uh, uh, I believe in cracking down on corporate crime. Another person said, oh, no, that's not a problem. And they're both candidates? That's great. But these are stupid, insipid, insane, vape, vapid ads, you know? Uh, what? what? What can you get across in 30 seconds? A sound bite or maybe a sound bark? Yeah. Uh, the three growth industries in America today. Yeah, here is, to show you uh, where our economy is going, the three fastest growing industries in America are temporary employment firms, oh, stop there. gambling uh, casinos, and prison construction. <laughs> Temp because you don't have to pay benefits. Right. Don't have to worry about health insurance. And part-time work. Hire them and fire them according to your own needs. That's right. Um, a lot of very large corporations are trying to do that with the unions. So you'd have like a dugout. You'd, have, you'd sit there all day long, waiting for the phone to ring, and maybe you'd have a job for that day. And you'd probably get paid maybe even in cash. I don't know. And then the company doesn't have to worry about you anymore, even when it no longer uses your services. Gambling, big. And... Uh, yeah, betting on the future instead of building the future. Nice. Yes. And uh, prisons. Theme parks are right up there, too. <laughs> you know, in, in the meantime, look, there, there are people undernourished, children undernourished, housing, mass transit, uh, yeah. schools need to be built, our bridges are crumbling, yeah. uh, stuff under the cities, the wires and the right. pipelines. We, uh, we haven't, uh, we're, not, we're not remodeling our, our public works, and we're going to pay awful for it. And if you stand up for unions, for organized labor, you're a commie. 
and we'll be back in just a moment. It's Donahue in New Hampshire for the primary with fed up and frustrated New Hampshire residents saying no to the vote. Find out why next Donahue. Shut up and just listen yourself. Yes, ma'am. Ralph, I'd like to know your advice for the average person that's working a full-time job with a family to try to become educated on the candidates. When all we're seeing is newspaper ads and TV ads, I don't know how to make a reasonable decision. Here in New Hampshire, there's a, a presidential welcoming committee made up of citizens such as yourself and they are presenting questions to the candidates to answer. Now, if the if candidates felt that there were a lot of people at, behind that, they would answer those questions. We have a magazine that one of our nonprofit groups puts out on global corporations, which frames the issues of corporate welfare, crime, pollution, job loss, etc. The address will be on shortly. That's another source of information. And then you've got a lot of good citizen groups here in, in New Hampshire, environmental groups, worker groups, taxpayer reform groups. They know where these candidates stand and what they've done on these issues. You just got to call them. Your library has a list of them. The information is there. You just got to give yourself time to study them. That's all. Over here, please. Hi, Ralph. Hi. Uh, as town clerk for the town of Bedford for 17 years, I see this apathy all the time. And, and I'm always after people, get an absentee ballot, uh, find out what's going on, do what, do this, do that. And um, it's like knocking your head against the wall. Let me suggest, if you had the initiative referendum recall statewide, and you had other issues on the ballot that you cared about, more voters are turned out, even if they're turned off on the uh, candidates. Number two, if you had a binding none of the above on the ballot, so you don't like the candidates on the ballot. You don't stay home and be accused of being apathetic. You vote for no, none of the above. If it wins, it cancels the election, sends the candidates packing, orders new elections. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to me the problem just in the country as a whole right now is that we're, we're a nation of people that just don't have any real values about anything. We don't, we don't get out there and say what we feel because we're afraid that Joe Blow, the neighbor next door, is going to be ticked off because we don't, we don't voice our opinions and we don't stand behind what our true values are. Let me tell you what will help. First of all, if we know our history, that almost all the things we love about this country started with one or two people, whether it's the women's right to vote, remember the six women in an upstate farmhouse in New York in 1846, the trade union movement giving workers a chance to bargain with these big companies, consumer environmental movements. Uh, everything starts with one or two. Why is that important for you to know? It gives you heart. It gives you hope. You know the people like the farmers going after the railroads and the banks in 1890, they went after overwhelming odds compared to what we're up against. And they prevailed. And, and they, they got rid of a plantation type indentured agrarian system. And we got the greatest production machine for food the world has ever seen. The second thing to know is really important is we have so many solutions in this country that are on the shelf that aren't being applied to problems that we don't deserve. And you name it. Health care, we're allowing these HMOs to merge, to gag the doctors and the nurses so they can't tell the truth. <laughs> to, and to, and to, and to, and, and to, and to uh, marginalize our health care, they give incentives now to doctors. If you don't treat this person, you don't refer this person special, you'll get a bonus at the end of the month. I mean, come on, this is America, land of the free, home of the brave. It all starts, and look at the New England town meeting. I grew up in Connecticut. My parents took me to the town meeting. That's where I learned about even people who didn't show up. Still, the people who did, that was the real thing the most democratic institution the world has ever seen. They were the legislature. And we've got to rebuild it here in New England and export it abroad. Uh, I'm lucky enough to be uh, retired, and uh, I'm a volunteer at the Democratic headquarters, and one of my jobs is to do research on all of the candidates, and I'm appalled about what I've read about every one of them. <laughs> 
I was going to say, Phil, right. the other way to, like you're worried about deficits in, you know, our future generations, cut out the corporate welfare budget, bring the Pentagon down to normal size, given uh, the, the situation in the world, and that'll balance your budget. Instead, they're making us fight over the crumbs, over a shrinking pie. Oh, we got to take it away from your drinking water renovation program. Oh, we got to take it away from your auto safety program. Oh, we got to take it away from your child nutrition. While the fat cats are loading up on the back of you taxpayers, fantastic. The more you know about this, and the more you realize that the essence of our country is community, it's self-reliance. We own the public lands. We own the public airways. We own $4 trillion of worker pension funds. We own trillions of dollars of mutual savings money. We control nothing. The corporations control what we own. We don't have our own audience network on TV. You don't have a cable channel for workers, for consumers, for students. But thank gosh we got a good a brand new Communications Act. There's going to be more competition, more, more mergers. Read the papers in the next few weeks as the big guys gobble up and we end up with 10 John Malones. Ever hear of John Malone? He has more out of Colorado. He, he controls one third or 30 percent or so of the uh, cable uh, uh, customers in the country. He can say to a competitor to CNN, you're not going to get past my door because I own a chunk of CNN. For what it's worth, uh, C-SPAN. Is there a better idea on cable television than C-SPAN? You get to see the House and the Senate right there, C-SPAN 1 and 2. C-SPAN 1, which covers the House, is carried by only 65 or 66 percent of America's cable systems. So your home shopping. The, what, uh, home, we, <laughs> well, I got three channels for Jesus, <laughs> two where I can buy cheap jewelry. Uh, I can get Barney on three different. Uh, and not one citizen action channel. Uh, and why not, you know, I think the C-SPAN to me is the gold standard. If you're not carrying C-SPAN and, and you're a cable operator, you cannot call yourself a, prou a proud American. I don't see how. Incidentally, C-SPAN 2, which is the Senate, 45%. Only 45%. We'll be back in just a moment. Pleased to uh, call your attention to the uh, magazine about which Ralph spoke a moment ago. It is titled Monitor. It is the most thorough, scholarly uh, review of what's happening in corporate America. And uh, it's much of, most of what you see in here you won't find in the major mainline newspapers. That's Post Office Box 19405, Washington, D.C. Yes, I'll be happy to give you this address again, 20036. Someday we'll live in a land without all these numbers. $12 a year for... Uh, subscription. Almost everything you do is affected by these companies. Your pension fund, your health safety, quality of your air, water, quality of your government. You know, I took a tire back and they did not, and they made me buy a new one. It's a brand new tire. Major League Tire Company. I don't want you to know which one it is, but you've seen them on the blimp. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they must have been a blimp not to give you a tire back. They picked the wrong person. I mean, these treads were... Nah, nah. Could be, you know, you hit us pressure and something we can't foresee, a pothole, and I said, well, no, we can't. No, no, no. Here's your bill. You know, what happened to courtesy and generosity and good old uh, fair play? Sir, you wanted to ask. Please. I think one of the problems today is the taking out of context. People can make a 400-word speech and some newspaper will pick up one line. Yes. Now, how can that reflect the yeah. feeling of the person yeah. making the speech? That's true. That's why you've got to bring the politicians to you in meetings like this. There are plenty of auditoriums around the country. Yes. Yes. Uh, regarding health insurance, I'm an RN, and I'm sick and tired of seeing the health insurance control stays in the hospital and doctors, what they do, and so on. But why hasn't the AMA done something? Why do they allow this to happen? 
Well, first of all, they're, they're under increasing pressure by physicians who are being marginalized or having insurance clerks second guess their treatment, saying you can't do this treatment, you can't have this operation. I think the AMA is going to finally turn around. Now, I think we're going to get universal health insurance when the doctors and nurses in this country revolt. They're being de-skilled, they're being marginalized by these giant HMOs where they pay the guys at the top 10, 20 million dollars a year. One of them got 104 million in one year, the head of Hospital Corporation of America. And nurses are being incentivized to move you out of the hospital. Dri I mean, dry no kidding, you get a bonus. You, you will in the hospital, you may be surrounded by healthcare personnel that inside, unspoken, they're, they're looking at you and they're saying, get out of here. <laughs> Drive, All right, let's go. Drive through births. Wondering what you propose as a constructive alternative to the existing tax code to promote savings and investment. And also, if we're in the early stages, possibly, of a populist revolution, what do you see as the relative role of government in the future to effectuate things that you feel are important? Appreciate the question. Mm -hmm. Ralph gets an uninterrupted I chance to answer. When we come back, we're still a commercial television program. I can't believe it myself. In just a moment. <laughs> Transcript of Donahue, send $3 to Journal Graphics, 1535 Grant Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203, or call 303-831-9000. To order a video cassette for only $24.95, just call 1-800-FOR-VIDEO. Which corporations get the most money from the United States government? Which corporations get the most subsidies? Which corporations are the stingiest? Which corporations have CEOs and other white-collar executives way up here while their workers make almost nothing? You'll find these and other answers in the monitor. Post Office Box 19405, Washington, D.C. The zip is 20036. It is $12 a year for a subscription. With only moments left, this man on, asks you okay, a question. On, on the tax system. Saul Price, the founder of the Price Club, is worth $400 million, wants a 1% to 2% tax on wealth above a $1 million. You notice there are no tax on securities and stock transactions, but they tax often your food or they tax your clothing on the sales tax. I also believe in a progressive tax. If you make a lot of money, you're making it because you're privileged in a lot of ways by public policy in this country. You should pay a higher rate than persons people who are making 30, 40, 50, 60,000 a year. Mm -hmm. The uh, California primary is in March. Nobody wins without California. Uh, now, you're on the ballot in the Green Party. The mainstream newspapers are suggesting you could do 10% of the vote or more as a Green Party candidate. You'll be right there on that, part, on that ballot next month in California, and it's rich um, cachet of, dele of uh, electoral votes. Uh, are you going to go for this, or are you just going to sit in Washington and watch what happens? You gonna you gonna go out there and sweat a little? I think we either have to shake up or bust up the two-party duopoly in this country. I want to try to contribute to that. I think in answer to the gentleman's question, the big thing government can do for us is give us the tools of democratic power to shape our own country and not get our, our knees in front, in front of global corporations that have no allegiance to this country or its people. Second, people don't like money in politics. Well, this Green Party candidacy of mine, I'm not seeking any money, spending any money, no money in politics. It's going to be volunteer, work, brain power, yes. footwork, go Green Party yeah, in you're California. Gonna, and, wait a minute. Hold it. I'm almost out of time. You're a spoiler, Ralph. The people who would have voted for Clinton are going to vote for you. You're going to bring Clinton's total down. Two and, two and the Republican candidate's going to win. You're a spoiler in everything you ever worked okay, for. Okay, first, first of all, how do you spoil an already spoiled system by the two parties? <laughs> and, and, sec and second of all, all our proposals to strengthen and deepen the democracy for all of you have no patent on them. If Clinton wants to steal them, if Dole wants to steal them, be my guest. And we'll be back with Ralph Nader in New Hampshire in just a moment. It's Donahue in New Hampshire for the primary with fed up and frustrated New Hampshire residents saying no to the vote. Find out why next Donahue. Ralph Nader 
Snyder may be the most conscientious uh, citizen, in the truest sense of the word, of our time. And I am pleased to uh, ask you to welcome to New Hampshire the person who raised him. This is Rose Nader. Would you kindly stand, Mrs. Nader? You got it. Come on, you got it. You did something right here, Mom. Thank you. And his, and his little sister, Claire, taught him everything he knows. Claire, you got to stand here. Okay. Well done. They'll never call him... They'll never call him egotistical. Ralph Nader got 6,000 votes in this very state four years ago on a write-in. Holy cow. And he is on the Green Party ticket to California, probably some other states as well. Keep your eye on Ralph Nader this year once more than the two-party system. Join me in thanking Ralph Nader. Services provided and promotional fees paid by the following.